Good morning. We're glad to welcome you all here to a slightly damp Sunday morning. Uh, and welcome those of you who are at home joining us on the uh, on the tube. Just a couple of announcements for this morning. Newsletter items are due today. Uh, however, while I'm saying that, I wanted to remind you, please go easy on the staff. Um, they're here this morning to worship just like everybody else. So uh, newsletter items are okay, but newsletter business, uh, conduct that some other time, please. Uh, there will be a special congregational meeting today, immediately after this worship service. Um, and the, uh, the Lord has shown uh, what he thinks about our congregational meeting, uh, if you know what it's about. <laughs> but that, I believe, is the only uh, announcements that I have. Are there any announcements? Yes. Yeah, are there any other announcements or concerns? Seeing none, let us begin uh, our service of worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We are free to love as God loves.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what would you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is the leisure of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord <clears throat> came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read Psalm 33 <clears throat> responsibly. <clears throat> Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the size of the army, nor are warriors rescued by their great strength. The horse gives vain hope for victory, 
Despite its great strength, it cannot save. Truly, your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love. To deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in time of famine. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you, for in your holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, and even as we place our hope in you. <clears throat> A reading from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. <clears throat> Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he has been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked toward the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power for procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many of the stars of heaven, as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All these died in faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel for this morning is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke, <clears throat> the 12th chapter, beginning at the 32nd verse. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those whose slaves, are those slaves whose ma who find the master <laughs> the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down and eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn or finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
I saw we had a couple of young people here today. Yeah, I don't bite. <laughs> Okay, good deal. You guys have any idea what you want to be when you grow up? A pilot? All right. Oh, firefighter. Okay. I couldn't hear him very well back here. All right. Do you have any idea what you want to be? Apparently not. Okay. Do you know what you have to do to be a firefighter? Because you're going to have to learn some things. You have to go through some training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First, you have to learn what kind of a house it is, and you have to know what's likely to happen in that kind of a house. You have to learn a lot of stuff to be a firefighter. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, even if you want to grow up to be a cowboy, you have to learn how to ride a horse, right? All right. That's good because I've only ridden a horse once in my entire life. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, what I want you to know is that sometimes it can seem awful hard to get to where you want to be. But if you just trust in the Lord, you'll be able to get there. God will watch over you, and God will guide you, and God will help you get where you need to get to do the things you want to do. Okay? Because that's how you get those dreams in your heart in the first place. Let's have a quick prayer. Great Lord God, we give you thanks for these young minds always open for these young hearts. We ask you to fill these minds with your love and your care and these hearts with your strength. We give you thanks for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming out and helping me a little bit at least. <laughs>
flowing with milk and honey. Now, any rational person could see that that couldn't happen. Just, just can't be. Uh, even as the scripture tells us that it had ceased to be with the way of women with Sarai. Uh, if you don't know what that means, ask me afterwards, I'll explain it. But when you're acting blindly and out of faith, irrational things can sound reasonable. Now, I, I don't like telling our story because it sounds a little like bragging, but I've been told that I ought to tell it more often, so here it goes. Now, I don't want any of you young folks thinking that this is a good idea, uh, but I was a high school dropout. Um, I enlisted in the Air Force, and back then, the Air Force would take enlistees without a high school diploma. They won't do that anymore, so don't even try it. Anyway, I achieved a GED diploma, that's General Education Development Diploma, in the service. Carrie and I were married. I got an honorable discharge after four years of service. We had two kids. I had a job that I liked. But I had been feeling the call to ministry for a long time. And I kept putting that behind me, saying, no, that's for people who are educated and pious. And I was neither. But it bothered me so much that I, I had to do something. So finally, I decided I'd do something about it. Now, no regular college is going to accept me with a GED diploma. So I started at Chicago City Junior College. And I was pretty sure that I was going to flunk out and then I wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So it wasn't much of a risk. Well, instead of flunking, I got A's and B's. The Holy Spirit has a sense of humor. Now I had to go through with it. I mean, what else can I do? But if you have a bachelor's degree in something, you have to have at least a bachelor's degree in something just to get into seminary. And then it's a rather rough four-year master's program there. Well, very soon I'd amassed about all the credits that I could for a junior college. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. I was pretty much stuck. About then, a friend of mine from Air Force days stopped by on his way to visit his parents uh, in Waukesha, Wisconsin, uh, where he grew up. And he said that I should do what he did. That he had, uh, he'd married a, a local girl, by the way, from Tucson, uh, where we had been stationed. And after trying living in Waukesha for a couple of years, uh, after his discharge, uh, he moved back to Tucson. Uh, it was too cold for him up there. But what he was doing is he was working part-time, going to the University of Arizona, which had a really reasonable tuition rate at the time. And he was working part-time and living in part on the, uh, the GI Bill. I told him that I wasn't covered by the GI Bill. But he said that Congress had made the coverage go all the way back to Korea so that it covered all of those of us from then until present. Now here comes the jump. Try and follow this. I applied to the University of Arizona, and we're living in Chicago, by the way. I applied to the University of Arizona. I didn't have a regular high school diploma, but I did have really good grades in junior college. I applied for the GI Bill moving like the government usually does, it's going to take several months before you find out whether you know that you've been accepted or not. I quit my job, packed up everything we owned, put it all in a U-Haul truck, we sold or gave away everything that we couldn't pack, and we headed for Arizona. I was driving the truck, Carrie was driving a station wagon with the two kids in it behind me. And uh, it's funny, I remember this number exactly. We had $323 to our name. 
I hadn't been accepted yet by the U of A. I hadn't yet been approved by the GI Bill. I had no job in Arizona. We had no place to live. And if that didn't complicate things enough, I personally didn't know anybody who had ever graduated college. Certainly, certainly not anybody in my family. When I look at it now, that was insane. It, it really was. But at the time, blinded by a calling, it seemed doable. Well, the only thing I could do, I put the whole thing in the hands of the Lord and do largely to my wife doing miracles with our budget. I have never been hungry a day since. But, oh, and uh, also while I'm talking about my wife, we also found housing there. She was in a real estate office trying to find something that was uh, thrifty enough that we could afford to do it. When a man came in, a landlord, and said he was taking his house off the market because uh, it had been destroyed by the tenants that had it beforehand. And she followed him outside of the real estate office and told him, my husband can fix anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we moved into that house at half rent and uh, he gave me a charge account at the local hardware store and said, get whatever you need to get, fix the house up. As it turned out, he had several houses in Tucson and we fixed one and moved to another one to fix that. So we went at half rent most of the time. I can see how Abram believed God and went ahead with God's plan as unrealistic as it may sound to anybody else. I know my family thought that we were going to starve to death in Arizona. But nothing, nothing is too far-fetched for God. I've, I've been told by several people that they almost went into the ministry, but never followed through with it. It was too expensive. It took too long. The schooling was too hard. It would have been a strain on the family. Things get in the way. Well, I ask myself, where would we be if Abram had said to God that he was way too old to have children, much less be able to, to live long enough to raise them. He was pretty comfortable where he was. He had good herds, good grazing land, good neighbors. Now, I, I can imagine Sarai would have liked to have had children. But when she was younger, not when she's 90, Abram said, if God says we can do it, we can do it. I'm not afraid. If we go to today's gospel lesson, we can see where Jesus tells us, do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where the thief, where no thief comes and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. In a couple of minutes, we're going to, to sing a beautiful hymn that tells us the same thing. Have no fear. Do not be afraid. Even if God is leading us into things that, that all of our common sense tells us can't be done. If you're 99, like Abram, you can still teach Sunday school. You can serve on the church council, teach adult forums, assist at the altar, and, and, and on and on and on like that. I mean, if you're 83, you can still lead worship. I wouldn't have believed that the when I started college either. On the other hand, as we had some young people out here today, if you're a teenager, you can be an acolyte or an usher or read lessons. If you're even younger, you can bring the offering forward, perhaps do some special music 
There are many things that you can do at that age. And, and even if you're three months old, your squalling is the greatest hymn that can ever be sung in our worship services. That is God saying that God believes in us. We're often asked if we believe in God. God believes in us. He tells us that by giving us children to carry the church on. Every baby is a miracle. Have no fear, little flock. If we seem to be being asked to do impossible things, put them into the hands of the Lord. We will never go hungry in God's care. As, as I was putting this sermon together, I didn't think, I, I wasn't thinking about today. I didn't realize how it was going to sound with the subject of today's congregational meeting. God leads us in strange ways. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now let us join together in confessing our Christian faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, 
receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Mercy. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you, especially Becky, Elizabeth, Joy, BJ, Mike, Gail, Keith, Roberta, Sylvia, Jim, Dana, LaVon, and the Holbert family and those who we name now. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God. Hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As he placed their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us show signs of that peace to one another. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as in the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of heaven, all the choirs of angels, with the church of, on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to all present, saying, all of you eat of this. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Christ until he comes again in glory. And in the assurance that Christ is with us in this meal, let us pray together the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace now and forever. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and comfort you and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Remember that we have a congregational meeting almost immediately, so don't go in peace. <laughs> Love your neighbor. Yeah.